Hello and welcome once again to Murphy's Music Interviews. And with me today I have hip hop extraordinaire Lil Jewel. Uh, Lil Jewel, thank you for, be for being on my show. That's all right, Murphy. Thank you for having me. So, tell me a little bit about what first got you into hip-hop. What first got me into hip-hop? Um, I think this might be something a lot of rappers could relate, but um, it was poetry. Um, okay. English literature was my favorite subject in high school, and eventually that prompted me. I really enjoy reading them, the poetry, the, the plays, the novels but eventually i just thought oh, i want to create my own writing i want to write my own stuff and that's how i got into poetry writing eventually that sort of evolved though and i thought oh what if i write some l lyrics you know and so i did and eventually i became a lyricist i already kind of liked hip-hop music back then already so those two interests sort of merged and then eventually I just uh, sort of took the rapper sort of route and made my own song so yeah nice nice so did you have a background in music at all before that or? I can't say I have a very in-depth background in music I'd say what sparked it all was like the literature side of things mm. the writing of lyrics and eventually working it around rhythm learning about beat making counting bars um, and just learning through the different music I listen to and trying to uh, I guess emulate that a little bit as well so um yeah Nice. So who would you say were your, your first sort of influences, both I guess in poetry and in music? Um, in poetry, it's pretty diverse. Like, I think it's been so many years, I might even, you know, struggle with remembering a lot of the poets we studied. But I feel like in terms of music, I, like, it's a bit of a variety. Like, I think with old school stuff, some of the 90s rappers... Uh, Lil Kim is definitely one of my favorite 90s rappers, I'm not gonna lie. Like, she's just got this badass lady vibe about her. So I'd say Lil Kim is a key influence. But I guess branching off of that, um, the notorious B.I.G. who mentored Lil Kim had his own thing going on. Mm. And that kind of really influenced me too. Um, uh, Jay-Z and Nas, um, Eminem, all of those sort of classic hardcore sort of hot spitting rappers I really got into. I think it's because the aggressiveness those rappers embodied helped me to cope with hard times, you know, and, and moments of hardship, you know, during 10 years where it can be overwhelming sometimes. And, you know, we all got our different ways of getting things out of our system. And for me, it was the, um, it was the hardcore hip hop that helped me through. So it sort of gave you an outlet. Yes, 100%. Hmm. Well, I think it's always good to have an outfit. 100%. Um, and I think that applies to various genres of music, um, not just hip-hop. So I, I think it's a very fortunate thing that I, I was able to discover that and to, to be able to make my own spin on it. Hmm. 
ain't talking credits, but I'm still the master. Luke Hobbs, Dominic Toretto, Brian, who the faster? Usain Bolt, now we bout to run shit. All you bitches on some bum shit. I am afraid to put your name, so that is Gasper, but I turned you to a Casper. I am talking hidden gems, but I'ma call you Jasper. Still gotta fight in me before I was a rapper. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Was it? Was it... Ooh, I think, like I said, since my high school days, so since maybe the early 2010s, but back then I was just putting my toes in the water, so in the early 2010s I was just in my own bedroom <laughs> listening to songs and maybe writing lyrics onto my A4 size notebook, but I didn't really... I wasn't solidified enough until maybe 2014. Okay. When I was in college, and that's when I started to listen to original beats on the internet. Um, there was this very cool site called Newgrounds.com, and I used to borrow a lot of the instrumentals from there. I always credited them, but that's when I started to write my own raps, two beats, two original beats, and recording them on my own, mixing them on my own. Um, I looked up. Um, YouTube tutorials to learn how to do mixing, to learn how to do recording. So I think 2014 was kind of the year when my inner producer slash songwriter side of me um, came out a bit. So um, I'd say at least 10 years now. Mm. Nice. So uh, what sort of programs do you use for your beat making and things like mm. that? Um, with beat making, I only picked up on my own beat making maybe four years or maybe five years ago. Um, mine is pretty basic. I know a lot of producers use very high end or kind of advanced um, dolls or like applications and systems. For me, with beat making, I I stick with a very basic one. It's called LLMS. It's kind of a free for all to use um application. I know that one. Yeah. I think he was using that for a while. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. The basic platform I have, I think it's been a pretty good journey. I was able to experiment with my sound a bit more and um, create some original melodies. So um, I've been pretty happy with LMMS. Yeah. I can't complain much. Mm. I think it's, it's sort of like the free version of, uh, of, of Fruity Loops. Kind of, yeah. Or FL yeah. Studio, I believe it's called. That. Yeah, there's so many of them. I've been keeping my eye out on different ones, though. Like I know there's Pro Tools, there's... Um, Oh, what's that other one's name? I think that's Cubase. Yeah, Cubase. Cubase has been around a long time. Yeah, Cubase. And uh, that's one One of my mates used this a lot too. I'm just Ableton, I think Ableton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's very popular. Yeah. Indeed, and, uh, I think um, DJ Shadow uses that one. Oh, really? DJ Shadow, uh, yeah. Certainly for live shows. I'm not, I'm not so much sure for it in the studio, but right -oh. I've heard him talk about it. Yeah. So, uh, Radio, yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe in the future I'll try to upgrade it. But currently, I think just keeping it basic and see where it takes me. some of your other interests outside of, outside of music and, and, and literature? I think with any artist, you know, it's nice to be in your own space and create, but sometimes, you know, we also need other downtime where we get out of that space a little and come back stronger. For me, whenever I feel stuck or be on the writer's block sometimes, I just like to go out um, for a nice walk. I'm from Ballarat, so oh, yeah. um, the lake there um, in the Wendery area of Ballarat. It's a very beautiful spot. Um, a lot of locals go there all the time to walk the dogs and have a nice stroll run. And that's my outlet sometimes, just going there with, sometimes with mates, sometimes with myself, just with myself. And um, and it's nice, you get to see nice scenery, you get to see the lovely animals there, the lovely 
uh, big black swans. Oh, nice. um, it gets me through. Um, I also really like squash, so I, I do play a lot of squash, okay. and um, it's good. It, it keeps me active. So um, I'd say those two are my biggest uh, outlets whenever I need to clear my head. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. It's good to have uh, have somewhere where you can, you know, go and sort of clear your head like that. 100%. Uh, and mm. also playing, you know, playing sport and all that. <laughs> is it something else that is a sort of let out some aggression and mm. things like that? So I believe you've got a new a new album or mixtape coming out soon? Or yeah. Or is it already out? Or? It's recently out. I put it, put, uh, it's in a mixtape project I put out um, a couple months ago, back in August of this year. Um... I call it mixtape because a lot of my projects, I always feel like I'm still learning. I always feel like there's space for me to become better as a professional, mm -hmm. hence why, and being in the underground scene and all that, I feel like mixtape is kind of a nice label to attach to all my projects. Um, but with that being said, though, um, I feel like they always come from a special part within of me because it's my way of telling my truth and my way of telling my experiences so i think storytelling wise um those uh those projects uh it's just as packed uh w with the same hearts that i put into um making them so um it's called ovu kiss um and it's a 21 track project I brought one for Prime Eights from for, for, from the Quakers. Um, oh. <laughs> I'll give it back to to uh, to Prime Eight, but uh, this you is kind of a Prime Eight or Zimmy. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a physical CD version of it. Oh. Um, I've been sharing it with some friends and had it in some of the merch stores at gigs um, in the recent past. But um, basically, Ophiuchus is the name of the 13th star sign. Oh, it's, awesome. Yeah, it's kind of like a... Kind of like a... How do you put it? Like a unrecognized star, star sign. You know how in the traditional zodiac, there's only 12 star signs? Right. Um, whereas Ophiuchus is kind of the unrecognized 13th sign where... They could have been part of the whole family, but in the end, it wasn't included. But okay. but it's the de it's debated sometimes that ah, uh, if it's an alternate model, it would have fit in. So I named it after that because I looked up the charts of that alternate model, and if it really was to come into effect, my birthdays would actually fall into the Ophiuchus mm. star sign. So where would what's what what are the dates for that? I believe it's somewhere between late. November to I think mid December. Don't quote me on it, but it's okay. between those two months, and um, its symbol is by a serpent bearer, so a man handling like a snake or trying to wrestle with a snake, pretty much. Okay. I've I've heard it's kind of like a symbolism of the snake being one's ego or one's pride, and I guess. The humanity trying to kind of um, contain it or in a way kind of master it so it doesn't get the better side of us and to me it was kind of meaningful and I thought oh you know if I wasn't a Sagittarius I could have been an Ophiuchus and so to me it's just a different way of looking at what I could be or different mm. potentials the world has so to me it represents an alternative and to me mm. i think an alternative is always good because it symbolizes fluidity it doesn't have to be boxed in sometimes uh things could be done differently and that's all right so um hence the title of the mixtape ovio because sonically though genre rise though i feel like it's still very rooted in hip-hop because that's my primary primary genre but i think on this album i've Explore, explored a lot more differently too so I think another central theme would be vocals freestyles which in a nutshell means I didn't write a lot of the lyrics for some of the songs I mainly just freestyled it and there okay. aren't even rap vocals they're kind of just like singing vocals to some atmospheric beats that I've produced and to me I think it represents a more vulnerable side of myself but also like kind of a softer, kind of the yin and yang balance where you've got the hard hitting hip hop bars, but then there's some soft and more 
um, free flowing, easy to listen to um, freestyles on it as well to balance it out. So something hard, something soft, and having a nice balance. There's also a bit of instrumentals as well as acapellas in it. So it's definitely a very diverse um, collection. It's 21 tracks. But with that being said, I think the total duration is around 40 to 50 minutes. So it's not okay. very long, this song. So um, if you guys want to ever check it out, it's on my streaming platforms, YouTube, Spotify. Um, feel free to check it out if you like that sort of sound, hip hop and, you know, experimental. Um, really appreciate the support. If you come to any of my future gigs, um, I believe I'll, you have one coming up shortly. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, and um, I will have Primate of the Quagas be on it as well. It'll be in my local town, Ballarat, um, and it'll be held at the Ballarat Trades Hall. Um, the show is called Hip Hop Fusion Live, and I named it that because obviously it's my primary genre. But I feel like as hip hop. Nowadays, I feel like there's no one way to define the genre. Um, it can branch out into so many different directions. Hence, I wanted to emphasize that fluidity. So I called it hip hop fusion life because I feel like aside from the traditional ideas of hip hop or what hip hop should be like, I feel like there should be room for other sounds and ideas to be explored and appreciated. So um, hence, you know, um, the title of it. But it'll be held at uh, the 30th of November, Saturday. So it'll be at the end of November, roughly two weeks uh, two weeks time from now, depending on if this vlog or interview gets released. But it'll be at the 30th of November, end of November. Um, Just for, for people watching at home, we're filming this uh, a week before this actually goes up. So it'll mm. be a week from, from when this happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'll, I'll put the date up on the screen. Awesome. Thank you, Murphy. Um And yeah, um, if you manage to catch this interview before the dates of the show, please consider coming along. It'll be a very fun night uh, with live music. And I'm sure Primate will help me attach the details uh, on the links as well. So um, um, I look forward to um, having it and, you know, um, having a good time with everyone. So um Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for, for coming along to do this interview. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to hearing the new uh, mixtape because, mm. as you say about the uh, the yin and the yang, I've always thought that you were kind of like that. You have this sort of, uh, the fact that you would go from the sort of rough uh, mm. rap voice into the more sort of more softer singing voice. I thought you've always sure. had that. So um, yeah. I look forward to exploring, hearing you explore that more on this new album. So, thank you, uh, Murphy. Make sure to let me know what you think of it. <laughs> I certainly will. Mm. And uh, yes, it will be. I'll be posting this uh, next week. So, um, mm -hmm. yes, thank you, little Jules, for coming along. And thank you for watching Murphy's Music Interviews.